Well, last Friday, I just got finished watching The Haunting of Bly Manor Season 2. If you don't know what it is, it's part of the series um, from two years ago on Netflix. Remember The Haunting of Hill House? It's not a direct, it has nothing to do with that story. It's a new story. Like, it's an anthology. Created by the same person, Mike Flanagan, who directed Doctor Sleep. So this is a new season of the same, of the anthology, like American Horror Story. Just like that. So many returning cast from the first season of Haunting Hill House is returned for this, for this story. And obviously some haven't. You'll notice the ones that have returned, including the main characters. Of this um, new story being told on Netflix. Now, I really like this um, season two. I like this story. Tragic, hard. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of themes. There's tragedy, love, obsession, fe not feeling alone, loneliness, heartbroken, breaking, heartbreaking. Um. Obsession. Oh, I said obsession. Craziness. Um, if you think, is it when I mentioned those? It's not a typical horror movie, horror style, um, type of show, movie, whatever you want. It's a show. It's yeah, it has some horror elements, but it's more of a love story than a horror story. And that's what I like about it. How it has a story behind this, behind this whole show. And so it makes it interesting so that got people into it. It's so we're gonna start off with a main character. Danny, as they should be called Clayton. Played by the Victoria Pregetti, I think is her name. Right? Yeah, Victoria Pregetti. If you remember her, she was in the first story from two years ago on Haunting Hill House. She played Nail, I believe it's the girl's name. The youngest sister of the Crane family. She was a twin with her co-star, who's gonna, who's gonna be in this story too, in this um this series. She was a twin, the twin, yeah, the twin sister, the youngest siblings of the Crane family. She's one. The tragedy got her neck broken, whatever, and she became a ghost. And at the end of I'm spoiling here, at the end of Hunting Hills, her. The father and the mother all remain at the Hunting Hills because when you die in Hunting Hills, your soul is trapped there. Um, point of that story was the mother wanted the whole family to be dead so they could be a family dead together in a hill hell in the hill house. But the father convinced her that let the rest of the siblings live, live their lives. He's willing to take his, he's willing to sacrifice his life so he could be with her and their and her. But in this story. She's the main protagonist, I guess, if you call us. We're sure an American who moves to England. <sighs> yeah, she's an American who moves to England. She was a school teacher, but here she becomes a nanny. And right off the bat, she talks to the uncle of the two kids. These are her two kids. Um, Flora. And Miles. And this is the uncle. Henry. Henry Wingrave. Played by Henry Thomas. Who in the first season. Was the younger Crane father. In the flashbacks. Remember that. So this story is being told by. Jamie. And I'll tell you about her later. It's been Carol Gino's, Carol Gino's character. She's narrating a story about Bly Manor to this to uh, Flora, this girl, who is engaged to get married. Her and her fa her uncle, her brother, and some friends are there, and a an engagement party before whatever. So this is um yeah, she becomes a nanny of Bly Manor. So, I'm going to talk about her character, right? So, 
As I said, she's a school teacher. She was a school teacher in America, but she moves to England. The reason for that is because, tragically, her fiance, she was married. She was engaged to get married in America. Her fiance, tragically, died from an accident. And what happened was, she didn't she didn't grow up with parents. So his, her fiance, they grew up together. Friends eventually fell in love. They kind of her his fiance, her fiance's family kind of took him in. And one day at the restaurant, one day at the restaurant. Two of them getting together, she had to bring she she had to tell him the truth that she's a lesbian. She really is a lesbian and she she couldn't hide her feelings anymore and he obviously he didn't take it too well. They go back in the car, you see him back in the car. He was not taking it too well. He told her to F off whatever. Gets out of the car and all as as soon as he gets out of the car, a truck wants him over and kills him. So as time goes on, when she's still in the States, she feels guilty. She feels responsible for her death, for his death. And this one time, this woman comes to the house to check on her because she's been um, avoiding people because she feels guilty. She's stuff like that. She's been avoiding people. This woman has has his, her dad's fiance's glasses, broken glasses. So she takes them, and you know, every time she 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 has so much guilt that she in the mirror she sees um the ghost of her fiance with yellow white lights like um flickering headlights. You see in the car, but that's obviously on the truck because the truck killed him, right? Ran him over, and so she's haunted by her guilt, and that's supposed to represent her guilt, her her feeling guilty for her dead fiance. Um, and that's and it's a ghost, and she she haunts him. She she can't escape that. She, she even when she goes to England, that guilt still carries her. And she, every time, and she covers up mirrors of coverings so she doesn't see the ghost, the reflection, the her dead fiance's ghost. So she meets Henry Wingrave right in the first episode, the uncle of of um, Flora Wingrave. And a Miles Wingrave, but there's a there's a story behind, more interesting story with Flora Wingrave, the uncle, so and Miles. He tells her why does he want the job? She 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 teach him okay. She gets a job obviously, so she she gets a driver named Owen. Owen, I'll tell you who Owen is. This is Owen, an aspiring chef. Loves to cook. But he was a chauffeur that took Danny to um, Blind Manor. Where she decided to get out of the car and walk towards closer to the Blind Manor, the, the property. And this is where she meets Flora. They introduce each other. She's the new, oh well not, she's a nanny to Flora. And she, just, she meets Miles by the well on uh, Blind Manor's property. And something interesting happened at the well bef before they met. I'll tell you about it later. Okay, that's basically the first episode. Um, so she meets Hannah Gross, this this woman. She's kind of housekeeper, blind manner, hired by Flora and um, Miles's parents. She, I believe she lit. She they wanted her to live there, and I believe she. She moved in to live there. I'm not 100% sure it was confirmed. So, they go in the house. Owen makes food. They have dinner together and she puts him to bed, right? She goes, checks on him. Miles, the thing with Miles is um, he's he's good, but he, he's had trouble at school. He got kicked out of school. Flora is very respectful, respect, respectful, very well behaved. Um, when they go to bed, um, checks in miles. She checks in miles. She checks in um, uh, Flora in her room. Fl Flora has a dollhouse, and he's these these little dolls made of um, different people in the house. There's one of the two kids, Flora and, and um, not Henry, Flora and uh, 
Miles, there's a doll of Owen, Hannah, Gross, whatever. And there's one interesting doll on the floor, under the, by the drawer, of a woman with black hair. I'll get it. Black hair. And, uh, and she told him, and she told her, told Danny, do not move that, put it back. Because that, that will signal something for later, a major thing later. And Danny told her, told her, do not leave her room at all during the night. And obviously she didn't listen. She goes, during the night, she goes down, goes to the kitchen to get a drink of tea. You can see a ghost in the background. But she was, f nothing happened to her, but she still got scolded. Because there's a reason why you're supposed to stay in your room during the night. When you wake up, there's um, there's there's mud in the f mud in the hallways, and it happens every night. They assume it's the kids, right? They sneak up at night, go outside. But there's a there's, as I said, there's a very reason. There's re reason why they, um they told her to stay in her room, and there's why there's mud, and then mud has something to do with that too. So Hannah Gross cleans that up, right? Okay. Okay, okay. You see, with the Miles and Flores, sometimes it seem like very nice. And Miles, and all of a sudden his demeanor changes. He's, he's very violent, very agitated. And at the end of episode one, she goes outside. And she looks up and she sees a, what appears to be a ghost. Someone. And that would be um, this guy. Peter Quint. This guy, Peter Quint, played by Oliver Jackson Cohen. He was the twin to Victor Pagetti's Neil in the first ser season. We had the drug problem. So she sees him on the she sees him on the blind manor at the, at the, on the balcony, blind manor, and he he she doesn't know he's a ghost. Yeah, sorry, I'm spoiling this for you. He's a, I'm, this is be spoilers. Doesn't see him as a ghost, but there's a very good reason for that. And he's a major part, he has a major part in this series. And um, she contacts Hannah Gross, she talks to Hannah Gross, Owen, and eventually Jamie. Sorry, I'm trying to find her. Jamie, who is a gardener, and she has she's a very strong willed woman, takes no shit from anybody. Um, she talks and they, and they think Peter Quint is missing, right? Peter Quint is someone went off, is missing. With Peter Quint, he has a he had a hard life growing up and there's stuff with that. Okay. So as episodes move along, we find we for example Peter Quint was was employed by um, Henry Wingrave, bef right? The thing is, nobody in the house liked him. Jamie didn't like him. Um, Hannah Gross didn't like him. This is a time before um, Danny came along. Um, Owen didn't seem to um, didn't like him at all, or like him. He did, but the other two, Jamie and Hannah Gross, because Hannah Gross. Didn't improve of something, and he called her do called him do something that he, he shouldn't. But there's one person that took a liking to him, and that's Miles. Miles and Peter Quinn kind of build a relationship. It's because Miles and Flora lost their parents, and I'll talk about that. They lost their parents tragically to an accident in India. Um, the thing with Peter Quint is he grew up with a deadbeat father, rapist father, yeah, and his mother didn't do anything. His mother was scum. So he had nobody to love. Um, he had nobody in his life. He was lonely, and um, he worked for her. He worked for Henry Wingrave. And then when Henry Wingrave was looking for a nanny because his brother 
and his wife, as I said, passed away in India. They look for Nanny. This is before Danny. Here comes Rebecca, Jesse. And um, he hires Henry Wingley, hires her, uh, but Peter Quint meets her first. He, char- he kind of charms her, but he's kind of charming. The thing is, he's charming. So, Henry Wingley hires her. Peter Quint is the one that drives her to Bly Manor. And they develop a relationship. Well, what can I say? Um, fl- See, Danny here starts talking more and more openly with um, Jamie, the gardener. Especially about her guilt with her ex fiance, who, tra- as I said, tragedy died in that crash by that. And she uh, got over it by talking about in with Jamie mostly, mostly. Um, and but they had a bonfire. I guess I guess it's a bonfire. It was just him too. Jamie left. She finally confronted. Um, Danny finally confronted her guilt, and took the glasses, the broken glasses of her dead fiance, and put them to fire. Finally accepting. And getting over the guilt of her fiance's death, and that ended the the, the ghost of her fiance. And it ended that. So I believe that was episode four, episode four or five. So after after burning the glasses, she's and uh, she got over her guilt. has gone about the fiance. Her focus now is on the kids and Bly Manor. So. There was a scene where um, Miles and uh, Flora locked, locked. Um, Danny into the a closet in Flora's room because her memory says she snuck out one night when she's supposed not supposed to. They did that. They locked her in for her own good because they don't want her sneaking out at night during the because of us because of a very dangerous ghost. Very dangerous ghost. If you, get her, if you get in the way, you're fucked. You're done. That's why they locked her in the closet. Did it for her own good. And it, it, you know, at times, there's Flora and uh, Miles are acting strange. You, really know, you don't know why, but I'll tell you why later. So, I forget what her fiance. Um, they, they went home. No, no, sorry. Um, you start seeing backstories of each of the ghosts. Now, Peter Quinn's backstory was he was following a lot of Rebecca, Jesse, the, na- the nanny before her. And um, they're obsessed with each other. He's really obsessed with her, crazy, because he never fell in love with anybody. He never had anybody to love him, I could, you could tell. And you could tell he's getting obsessed over her. And, um, you know, this weird thing. The ghosts always get these weird thing, um, dreams or memory flashbacks of his mother. And his mother is the one that tries to... was basically blackmailing him to get some jewelry from Henry Wingrove, his employer at the time. And when he was trying to do that, he got caught by Hannah Gross, and Hannah Gross didn't like him at all. And what happens there, Peter Quint, that's Peter Quint, was tired of this. And one night with Rebecca Jesse convinced was trying to convince her to convince her to, to leave with him to America tonight, the night they talked about it. So what he did was um he left the room. He left the room. The kids come out, he starts talking to them and all of a sudden this creature Lady Lake grabs him by the neck and chokes him, chokes him by, ch- drags him by choking him, right? And you see him down the corridor in, on this hallway and, and, turns to, and, turns, and turns into another corridor. And then all of a sudden you see him walk back. The kids were there. And the, all of a sudden he walk back. He doesn't know he's a ghost yet. He, he's, he's, he died because this, this lady, Lady with Lake, this is Lady Lake, choked him because she got in his, he got in her path. If you get in the path of this lady, you're fucked. You're done. 
but she's a ghost. I'll tell you her backstory later on. It's, it's just kind of a... She's the reason why everything in Blind Manor is, is chaotic. So he comes back. He thinks he's alive. Then all of a sudden, this lady comes back with his dead body, lifeless body, dragging him by the neck still. And he sees her like, no, stop dragging me. Stop that. He's, he's, he was upset. He, then he realized when he saw that, that he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Phone, damn it. And so, um, okay, so he's dead, right? And then Rebecca and Jesse hasn't seen him for some time. Everybody thought he, he, um, ditched him, he left. Right, and so he, even when the, even as time went on in the future, they still think he left, but he turned out to be a ghost. Remember, he even became a ghost. Every time he'd get killed by this thing right here, or her, you're trapped in that blind manor property or in manor. You can't leave it. As we, as, but there's some rumors that maybe you can, speculation that you can. So he comes back later. He, he's in uh, Rebecca Jesse's room. And look at her, she's like, where were you? She was upset, and uh, he was like, stop, stop, stop. He wanted to touch, he wanted to touch her, right? She wanted to touch him, and, he, and her hand went through him. She realized, she, she slowly realized that she, he was dead. But with his charm, because he, he was obsessed, but he's also charming. He was trying to find ways where they could be together, right? So they tried this one way when he possessed her body because she he found a way you could possess a person's body because he said he ditched her for a week to learn more about being a dead ghost. He found out you could possess people because he did he did touch Miles accidentally. He found out mm -hmm. he, and he did possess Miles, he could, the kid. So he found he decided to possess Rebecca Jesse and in her body tried to run off Blind Manor and all of a sudden he got pulled out. And she fell, and, she, and Rebecca Jesse, or Rebecca, I'll call her Rebecca, was back to herself, and he was on the rock near it. So he was upset, it, it, it won't work. But her speculation, it can work. And, but he, he manipulated and lied to her, like, maybe. And I'll tell you why. So they tried another way, and this is this is what, uh, this is where, where his um, obsession and manipulation Made him, made him like, made him the bad guy, the quick total scum. Even though he did it because he loved her and he wanted to be with her, I understand. That. There's, I have a little sympathy for this guy because he had a bad, tragic life and he finally found someone he loved. But that was, but I was taken away from him because he, because of the lady of the lake, killed him, killed him, and he's now he's a ghost. He can't be with his loved, his loved one, loved one, her, right. He can't be with her loved one, obviously, in the living. So he has to find a way. And that one to frit that by possessing a body and trying to escape Blind Manor it didn't work. Uh, he had his other choice, lied to her, said he, what he did was possess her body again. She accepted. She went to the he went into the lake to drown her. Now she to say, say he was saying he'll take the pain away by possessing her, so you won't feel a thing. But what happened was. As she was drowning, he left her body, and she got her body back, and she realized she was just drowning, and she couldn't do anything. And that's when she tragically died. Uh, right away, her ghost appeared on the side of the lake, and she was crying and yelling, seeing her dead floating body on top of the lake float. She was upset. She got tricked, lied to him, becoming a, becoming a ghost. And this is Peter's way of thinking they could be together forever, right? That the, she had to die so they could be together as ghosts. And there's another reason why. Because of possession. Because, I'll tell you why. Flora sees her dead floating body. And then Jamie, the gardener. I'll tell you, Jamie. The gardener sees her and hides Flora. And tragically, that's a tragic tale of Rebecca Jesse. And uh, Peter Quint, the love, the love, even though he was kind of a 
psycho, crazy, manipulative, charming. He did love Rebecca Trish. I, I believe that for a second. He just wanted to be with her, Nick, in the living. By living, he couldn't be with her. He had to be with her dead, right? Um, and he had a plan how they could be together while kind of living, even though they're still ghosts, by possession. As the treasure tale of them, stick Rebecca stuck in Blind Manor because she got killed by a ghost who got killed in Blind Manor by the Lady of the Lake, right? Um, so we got this Hannah Gross, right? Hannah Gross. Let me see if I can find her. Hannah Gross. Her and Owen had a relationship, like good friends relationship. I don't know if it's, I want to say it's love, but it's more like brother, I think it's more like brother-sister relationship. She's the one that interviewed him for the job of the chef. He, he's, his, um, his passion is to be open a chef, uh, have a restaurant and be a chef. He loves cooking. That's his, that's his passion. She, from the start, was there, uh, from the first episode, she, you could see her, she, it was, it was shocking and it was surprising, like, she was never hungry or whatever for some reason. And you never see her go off property. She was there was a church. She's found in the church on the there's a church on the Bly Manor's property. She was there. It's a small chapel, small church. But I was there. She she could be found there sometimes. But she used to have these flashbacks, and usually ghosts only have these flashbacks, right? Unless you're possessed. Every human possessed you get the flashbacks. But she, she but she was saying flashbacks to the multiple times interviewing Owen. And then these flashbacks, she kept getting on um, Peter Quint's nerves, right? Peter Quint's Peter Quint's nerves. Peter Quint couldn't stand her. It got to a point where it got really, really aggressive. They, um, he possessed Miles. That's where possession comes in. Possessed Miles. He, she caught Peter Quint trying to steal jewelry when, when uh, jewelry and Henry was jewelry. To sell to make money off them, yeah, worth thousands, right? Just because the jewelry is worth, I don't know, like centuries old, so it'll be worth thousands by, by then. Remember, this was just took place in 1987, so um, 33 years ago. Okay, and he didn't like that. She, she did not prove of Rebecca Jesse's and uh, Peter Quint's relationship because she, as I said, she thought was, he was manipulative, not good for her. Because she, Owen and Jamie, they care for Rebecca Jesse. They like Rebecca Jesse, the first nanny. So she actually flashbacks to interviewing Owen. And then stuff with, with, um, with um, Peter Quinn. She witnessed Peter Quinn's death like in, in, a, in a flashback somehow. I don't know how. But that was not part of her flashback. Well, it was part of her flashback. And it, at one point, there, uh, he's, Peter Quinn possessed uh, Miles. And Miles... He's a calm boy. Awesome. He became aggressive. He took her to the well. He became so aggressive. Out of aggression, pushed her down the well. There was a well on the property. To her death. It looks like she broke her neck or something. To her death. Now all of a sudden she appeared. She didn't know she died. I got to know. She didn't know she's dead. Because it was a quick death. So she didn't know she's dead. She didn't see her body die. Because she couldn't see her body down the well. She never looked down. So she saw she's still alive. And this is before, this is like seconds or seconds or minutes before um, Danny saw. Saw Miles as, as soon as she arrived to Blind Manor and Hannah Gross at the exact same time. So Hannah Gross is a ghost at the exact same time. And the, by the time Danny saw it, was at the well with Miles and Hannah Gross, it was, became a, it was literally seconds before Hannah Gross' death. You could tell Peter Quinn was not in his body anymore. And, um, with, as episodes went on, you learn more about Henry Wingrave's, Henry Wingrave, the uncle Flora, and Miles, in his office. He never visits them. He's always in his office late at night. And you can see he always drinks alcohol because he's feeling guilty. Because his brother and his, his sister-in-law, right? They had, they had, okay, so his brother and sister-in-law had the, the kids. 
But as his brother was away on business, he travels a lot. He was having an affair with um with his brother's sister. Not brother's sister, his brother's wife, sorry. And it turns out Flora turned out his daughter because his brother came back, he was suspicious for a little bit, but didn't think of anything. But he, he did the math about the pregnancy, like it didn't the the months didn't add up. And you could tell that as times went on. His brother's wife admitted to the, to her husband. Yeah, she was having a he was having an affair with Henry Wingrave, and Henry Wingrave loved his brother's fiance. So this one time, his um his brother comes to his office, his lawyer's office. I believe he's a lawyer. He's pissed off, tells him he can't visit. He he found out that Flora was was not not his daughter, and it was Henry's daughter. So Henry is the biological father of Flora. His, his brother told him that he cannot visit her. He cannot come to the blind man anymore. He basically threw him out of his life and his family's life because his brother says him and his wife are going to India to be try to rekindle their relationship, save their marriage. It's tormented Henry Wingrave a lot. But what really hurt him the most was he got a call from India that his brother and his, and his sister-in-law died tragically in a car crash. And this and his guilt, it just adds to his guilt, creating kind of like a doppelganger of himself. I believe it's from a story. Doppelganger himself, a guilt, like um, an evil, vicious doppelganger himself. But I think it's more of a doppelganger of guilt. He's a guilt doppelganger. He would call the house every time and, and nobody, and they would answer and he nobody would say anything. And he find out it's him. Um, and so this, his, when finding out his brother and sister all stuff just added to his guilt, made him drink even more, made him stay late at his office even more. Didn't really bother going to buy him or check on the kids that much. Not at all. Because he felt guilt. And, uh, that's him. Later on, he goes to Blind Manor, but this is end, towards the end of the series. Because he's stuff when he stole it up. And he actually, he does care about the kids. I'll give Sold up, right? Um, so what happened was, their plan, their plan, right? What happened was, their plan was to possess the kids. Her possessing Flora, and her to possess Miles. So they knock out Danny, and they, and they, and they put him in the attic. And the two ghosts appear, right? They, they appear, and they discuss their plan to the kids. So like Peter Quinn was telling them, he, he could be their father and mother. All they have to do, specifically Miles, because Miles took a look into Peter Quint, to Peter Quint, right? And Becca, you could tell, had a conscious. She's not a conscious. She's like she's still herself, despite even though they're ghosts, they st they they still possess human emotions. It sounds like it, it, human emotions and human feelings. And she did not she did not really like um, Peter Quint's plan. Like she she had a conscious about, and um. Peter Griffin convinced, convinced Miles to take about it, and Rebecca kind of convinced Flora. But what happened was, the door was knocking, and it was Hannah Grill, so Peter Griffin in Miles' body ran to grab Flora, take her all the way back to the rug, where her body is laying down at the bottom. And then all of a sudden, Rebecca spits out of Flora's, Flora's, um, Flora's body, discuss how this was planned, how they decided to go against Peter Griffin's plan, Peter Griffin's plan. Rebecca betrayed her, Peter Quinn, because she cannot do this to the kids as, be as much as she loves Peter Quinn. I think she does. She loves the kids more, and she puts the kids before them first because that's her job, and she cares about them too over love. Peter Quinn is more. Peter Quinn was in love with her, but he was more obsession obsessed with her because he never loved it. He never had love anybody in his life. So as she, as her and uh, Flores plan worked. Peter Quinn was miles by took Hannah Gross's all the way back to the well and they forced her to look down and she saw her dead body realizing she's a ghost. And nobody else knew she was a ghost. She didn't even know she was a ghost. And uh, Rebecca told Flora and Flora and um, Danny to leave the house and Danny was having a relationship, it was building a relationship with Jamie, a les yep, a lesbian relationship, they became very close, they fell in love. And this is where tragedy with her and her, Jamie comes in, love and tragedy, but good 
and bad. But as uh, Danny and uh, Flora were leaving the house, Flora was like, no, you can't make me. Blah, blah. And as Danny was trying to turn her back, all of a sudden she gets grabbed by the Lady of the Lake. The end of episode 8, I believe. Or episode 8, episode 9. Lady of the Lake grabbed. Because Danny was way wider in the path. And he gets as I says, you get in a path. You're, 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 you're fucked. Okay. So who's the Lady of the Lake? Well, the Lady of the Lake was uh, was one t- was human, of course. But she she lived in the blind manor with her sister. This is her. This is Lady of the Lake as a human. Viola Lloyd, I believe. She had a sister. Uh, Patricia Lloyd. Her father passed away, so they inherited the manor. She was a strong-willed woman. She was really strong-willed. Um, one day, uh, very well-known, respected man comes to the house. I forget what it was. It might have been a soldier or something, or a diplomat. You can tell Patricia was interested in him, but once Viola comes back, she took him away. She was interested in him. He was interested in Viola. They fell in love. Eventually got married at the chapel. She refused to obey him. Um, time went on. She got she got pregnant. Had a child with his her, her husband, named her Isabel. She was as Isabel was growing older as a baby. She was holding her. All of a sudden, she developed a cough. And the cough at first we thought it was nothing, but as went time went on, it got worse and worse to a point where she got sick. So they had to invite a, a plague doctor. I think this is 16th, 17th century. I'm not 100 percent sure. Plague doctor. Plague doctor said. Well, it's not the Black Plague. It's true because it's, it's the plague. The Black Plague was 300, 400 years before this. The plague. She didn't know exactly what, but she suggested him, her the daughter to stay away from her. Like, it's something with lung, lung disease. We don't know what it was, but some people speculate it might be turbulocus. Tur- tur- I can't say it. Tur- turbulocus, whatever it's called. Um, it sure do quick me to it is. Cause she was coughing up blood and stuff, and and back then there's um if you have it it's like you're done for it. you don't know how long you have. Um, the doctor told her she only has, she only has months. To, she probably only has months. So they tried everything to heal her, right? From leeches to other um, treatments, none of them work. So they got a a priest or whatever, cause they the the fought the, the her husband. And her sister thought, this is it. You might as well make peace with yourself. You could pass away and get your soul into heaven. And she's like, she said, no. I will not. She busy, strong, she rejected. She said, she, so she said, she'll live on. And miraculously, she did live five or six years. But she couldn't really see Isabel that much. As those time when Isabel grew older and older. There's one there's one point where the, her sister and her husband and Isabel were at the fire fireplace in the manor. And the husband... Dance. She walks in. She's um. She's she's in. She thinks Victoria's trying to. She thinks her sister's trying to trying to trying to steal him away. She, she slaps her sister, and you know she's not well. She goes back to the bed. Um, her husband later goes away on a mission and a job, leaving Victoria with her sister Perdicia, I think is her name, and her daughter. I don't know. Um, she kept coughing, coughing. She was getting. Uh, she was getting. As time went on, she was getting worse and worse. Victoria had, the Victoria's sister had enough and su- decided to suffocate her, but not out of mercy. And I think it was out of jealousy. She had enough. She couldn't take it anymore. So Victoria, Victoria Lloyd died. And before this, she promised her husband in a, in a, in a chest with um, clothing and other stuff, don't get, don't open this to, until Isabel is ready, it's during age, right? Okay. Well, when uh, her sister suffocates her death, her sister gets married to her husband, adopts Isabel. As time runs on, they're having financial problems, and um, they need to sell stuff. See, and her husband in his office had a, an envelope with three keys. Problem that would uh, goes with the chess. Uh, Radisha knew about this. 
I think it was Andy Pradesh. I'm not sure, 100 percent sure. Knew about this, and you know they, they're in financial trouble. They need to sell to make money, whatever to pay up. So he takes those three keys and from the office and the envelope in the drawer. She goes up to the chest. If it's just in the attic, and you could before this you see um Victoria as a she's a she's a ghost, right? But you don't see the ghost yet. Part yet come come out yet. She wakes up in the bed. She goes to the goes to the window. It's like it's all barred up. She goes to the mirror. Her face is there in this. But it is like on a loop over and over. And her face in the mirror gets worse and worse. Right? And then you see this door. This door, the door next to her, it keeps shaking and shaking, but it won't open. It won't open. So what happens is when her sister gets those three um, keys, goes up to the attic to the chest where the ch- if it's in the attic. One by one, she opens it, the chest, and uh, Victoria at the time was hearing the hearing the door. The door is like the gateway to the chest, gateway to the the gateway to the real world for her to escape purgatory. I guess you could call it purgatory. So as, Victoria, as her sister was opening, she was patiently waiting. She was too much to be her daughter because remember the promise her husband, yeah, who married her, his, his his sister after. Everything that in that chest has to go to their daughter Isabel. She was never able to see Isabel. It's the whole reason Lady Lake. That's the whole reason, basically, the story of Lady Lake. She couldn't see Isabel. So, um, as she was waiting, the door finally opens. Expecting to be Isabel, but she sees her sister, and she remembers what her sister did to her. She still has her memory. She remembers what her sister did to her by suffocating her. Because when she was suffocating, she was looking up and she could see her sister's face. And what she do? The the the, hap, the the foreignness in her turned to anger and rage, reached out her hands, choked her sister to death. And you can see the chest, at the chest part. You see hands just coming out, choking her sister to de- choking the sister to death. So later on, Henry comes up, sees it, sees his second wife dead, and assumes that the chest is cursed, right? So her and Isabel, him and Isabel, decide to p- pick up the chest and throw it into the lake. It was in a blind manner. And this form, Lady of the Lady of the Lake. And every night she walks out of the water because the chest is open, so she can escape it. Right, she walks out of the water. Same pathway, mud on the f- mud on the floor, mud from the ground into the hallway. Same pathway up the stairs to the where her Isabel's room is. For centuries, at one point, um, she had her face. At one point, she, normal face, normal face. She um, there was a there was a play going on at one point, and, and um, there was this, she walks into Isabel's room, and there was this man who was obviously sick. She it was obviously not Isabel. She could tell that it's not Isabel, and she knew it's not Isabel. She didn't take him because um, she had a memory and knew. Um, but this plague doctor comes in and says, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? She just grabs him, chokes him out, kills him. And he does a, if you keep getting in her way, and she does, she comes out every day. If you keep, if you get in her way, if you're not in her way, you're fine. But if you get in her way, she'll, she'll choke you out with her hand. Cause that's how she kills people with her hand. But here's the, here's the thing. As each day passes on, your face starts to deteriorate, goes, starts to disappear, goes away. And your memory starts to go away. And at one point... There's this one point, um, she goes, to the same thing, and then in, to Isabel's room, there's this boy. She thought it was Isabel, but she didn't have the memory, because the memory's fading away. And so, oh, she's not Isabel, it was a boy. She took him, she drowned the boy, and that boy became a ghost. Which Flora kind of befriended. And then it got to a point where she had no face, no eyes, and memory, not there. So this is Viola Lloyd, Lady of the Lake. What happens is she was, so she was grabbing Danny's neck, right? Goes up to Isabel's room. Flora follows him. Flora's like puts him away, and she all of a sudden you can see her memory card start coming back a little bit. She thinks Flora is um Flora is um Flora is um Isabel, her daughter. Obviously, Isabel is dead because this is centuries later. She grabs Isabel. Walks down the hallway to the lady to the lake. Henry arrives. Henry arrives because he 
Goes to set, goes to set, falls, and arrives. And she, as the lady of the lake was going to the lake, she was, she was in the lake with Isabel. She wanted to drown him. Jesse, Jesse, uh, Rebecca Jesse offered Isabel to possess her so she, she wouldn't feel pain. But all of a sudden, Danny comes in, starts to his magic lines, where if you see these, if you see these words, I forget what they are, but if you could look them out, a ghost, a ghost could accept, and um, she turns around, and she accepts. So what happens is, Danny sacrifices herself. She's not dead, but she sacrifices herself to be possessed by um, Lady Lady of the Lake, Violet Lloyd. And it's basically saved Bly Manor. All the ghosts that were chopped or died. Peter Quint. Peter Quint. Passes away. Uh, has died. His ghost of spirit starts to say sorry to Miles for possessing him. I think he really does feel sorry. He was a... Fr he... I know why he's 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 an asshole, but he's a, he was crazy in love and upset. He was obsessed too. Um, she pa she disappears. All the ghosts disappear, including Hannah Gross. Um, Owen and uh, Jamie realize that Hannah Gross is a ghost. Gosh. So they go to the rail and they see her dead body. Obviously, they obviously they bury her, right? Um, and um, uh, Danny becomes. A new vest, I guess, the vessel for Lady Lake, but she's not controlled by Lady Lake yet. So, what happens is, for the next five years, everybody moves on. They all move to America. Henry Winger moves to America. Jamie and um, Danny become lesbian lovers in America. Um, they own a, a flower shop, the florist. They live together. They go to Paris to meet. Owen, who's opened up a restaurant in honor of Hannah Gross, because they're very close. I don't know if they're falling in love. They're more like brother and sister. But he tells them that Flora and Miles don't remember anything of Blind Manor. Which is, to, to him, he says, maybe that's a good thing. So, as um, time's going on, about five, six years later, Danny, Danny starts seeing the Lady Lake's face in new reflections. Signaling to her that she's she's ready to take her over. She sees him in the bath and uh, water, and there's a one point where her she was up at night thinking about strangling Jamie, and he and Jamie, and Danny tells Jamie, "Oh, I can feel her. She's weak. She's angry, and she has to go back to Bly Manor." So Danny goes back to Bly Manor herself in the lake. Willing to sacrifice, willing to sacrifice herself as a lady and uh, become the new lady of the lake. She becomes a new lady, drowns, becomes a new lady of the lake. You see her peacefully at the bottom, now becoming, and she's a new lady of the lake. Jamie, Jamie followed her. He wanted to be taken, taken by her to be with her as a ghost, but Danny would refuse because unlike lady, unlike the Viola's lady of the lake. She was at peace. She wouldn't take anybody. She, nobody would be taken. And that's what the narrator, Carolina, who was the older Jamie at the beginning, said, nobody would be ever taken again. Yeah. And Danny's, they, Danny's a new lady, like, but she's not like Viola. She's not full of rage or anger. She's full of peace and love and everything. She's not willing to take a life because she's at peace. She's a peaceful ghost, as you could say. And then we cut back to the future where Viola is older, getting... Then we find her. Viola is older, getting engaged. We find out that Viola, uh, not Viola, Flora. <laughs> Flora, is, Flora is really the daughter of um, Henry Wingrave. We find out Flora is getting engaged, but she has no memory of that either. At her age, same with Miles. You see oh, at the engagement party. You see Owen's there. He's older. Um, their uncle is there. He's much older. Miles is there. Carlino is there. Jamie is Carlino is the older Jamie is there. Carla. She tells her story. Um, they all go to a different room, hotel. It's in the hotel. Flora reveals that her middle name is Flora. And she's scared to get buried. And uh, Jamie reassures her, gives her coffee. You love this guy, but she's like, yes. So they get married. Uh, uh, Flora gets married to her, her fiancé, her husband, become, becomes husband. Let me see um. Jamie goes to her room. Older Jamie goes to her room. 
sits down on the chair and then to end the show you see a hand on her shoulder and maybe she's dreaming it or maybe maybe it's actually Danny there the, the new lady like is there it's up for your interpretation I guess but yep let's end this show so what what can I say about this I love this love the show don't go in this as at the end of the show don't go expecting to be a horror movie because it's more love it's more of a love and tragedy story But I'll say this, I like the first series better, the first series better, but I like this one very much too. Um, I hope they make a third ser season. I'm pretty sure they will because if it's very, this, is, this show is very well received, the season is very well received, so they're probably going to pick it up. And um, yeah, so I suggest, I, re I recommend you watching this. So like, subscribe, and comment below if you like this show. Thank you.